So that is kind of, you know, a question that has, you know, been important, I think, in, in my line of research, right? Are microglia gone? Are they, are they becoming, you know, crazy or are they, you know, do they become terminators and start, you know, just executing neighboring cells and synapses in an unbiased manner? Or are microglia, at least in the beginning, doing their proper job as tissue resident macrophages and trying to eliminate the ones that are dysfunctional. So um, there's actually uh, also we have a manuscript uh, about that we're about to submit very soon that suggests that microglia, um, at least in the very early stages of the disease pathogenesis, you know, before what you know, it, before there's an overt um, you know neuroinflammation and you know alterations in microglial cell states. What we see is that microglia do their job as tissue resident macrophages, which is to detect signals that are upregulated in synapses that turn on these eat me signals for microglia to eat them, right? And so what we see is that they're also tightly linked with activity. So we see that, um, you know, we've known for a while from both human as well as in animal studies that micro, um, that, um, that neurons become hyperactive. And so, and also synapses start dying. It's a term coined synaptosis that has been termed you know, and coined by Morton Chang and many others, many other pioneers in the field and also K. Cho. And so what we see is that, um, you know, synapses become hyperactive upon challenge with, you know, toxic apinolipomers, for example, and turn on this eat me signal called phosphorin serine. And microglia can detect these synapses that become hyperactive, meaning that they have an increased level of spontaneous calcium transients. And they flip the phosphorin serine, which is then recognized by microglia. And so we see a very specific engulfment of these synapses by microglia. So long story short to your question, we do think that microglia, you know, at least when microglia themselves are healthy and young and metabolically active, they try to do their job and they go after the ones that are quote unquote dysfunctional or damaged or dying, right? However, what we see is that when mice carry mutations, for example, TREM2, which has been implicated, implicated loss of function in TREM2 increases the risk for Alzheimer's. When we use lines, or microglia from those kind of, you know, uh, mutants, right, TREM2 mutants, microglia can no longer recognize which ones are dysfunctional and which ones are still healthy and properly functioning. So we think that um, this is one of the key reasons why microglia um, are, are, you know, mutations in microglia leads to increased risk, right? It's not 100% penetrant. It's about increased risk for developing Alzheimer's, meaning that if there's a failure of microglia to properly detect which ones are damaged and which ones are not, you can imagine overall with aging and you know chronic dyshomeostasis that leads to you know increased uh, vulnerability of the synapses to become more dysfunctional, and the neurons at the end of the day are unable to rescue themselves.